Hey everybody, welcome back, Steve from the Pinball Room. All right, this is being posted post-show, but it's actually done pre-show, but that doesn't really matter. We're here talking today about how to go through and cut out and make our own plastics, all right? Now there's a bunch of plastics you're gonna go ahead and end up making for your pinball machine. The most um, obvious ones most people think about are the ones right over your slingshots, the ones around your inlane guides, down to your flippers for those ball guides, and then really, if you think about it, almost anywhere else there's a place where the ball could get stuck we're gonna put a plastic to cover that crevasse, that, uh, that hole, that chasm, that gap, to make sure that if a ball does bounce up somewhere that's not really intended to, because balls bounce around all over the place on pinball machines, right? If it bounces up somewhere it shouldn't, we don't want it to get stuck. We want it to have a cover so it can roll off, and then we gotta see where things are rolling, maybe add a couple of poles, maybe add another piece of plastic, different levels, to help make sure that the ball always is funneled down to the bottom as much as possible. So before we even go to the show, I know I've got some very problematic areas, some giant areas where the ball will bounce and just get stuck. So naturally, we've got to get some plastics for our slingshots. We need to cut out some that are going to fit for the slingshots, all right? Beyond that, though, we go further up the play field. We've got a number of other areas. Um, here's where the ball is supposed to go in these two lanes. Well, right in between, is this big gap in between these wire um, wire lanes, these ball guides, I mean, between these metal ball guides, where the ball can bounce up and get stuck in any of these places. Back here, back in this little hole, down along this side, back here behind this, uh, behind this ramp. And then up over here, we've got the captive ball. So obviously the area here on top of the captive ball we want to cover so the ball doesn't bounce out or another one hop in there with it. But then we've also got the whole rest of this area in between these ball guides as well. Now, this is a big enough area. Eventually, I want to put it like a toy here, sculpt a toy, probably like the Hermit sculpture. But for right now, I just need to get it covered so the ball doesn't get stuck in there, okay? Back here in this back corner, I've noticed that since I have um, that feed coming out from behind, the ball has never gotten stuck here. There's a little tiny gap in between here we might have to worry about, but I'm going to wait and go to the show and just see how bad that is if it happens. But over back here, this is all underneath the ramp. You'd think nothing ever happens. But there's been times when I've launched the ball or it has auto-launched really hard and it has come up and it might just be because it's hitting this um, ball guide holder right here that eventually will replace with just a rivet so it's not so wide and hitting the ball. But regardless, there's been three times, if not four, I can remember at least three times for sure, where the ball has come through out of the shooter lane and somehow bounced up right in between here and gone behind here in the back. Okay, And so I need to figure out what I'm going to do there. I could put a piece of plastic back here somehow. Um, I'm also wondering if maybe I just put some sort of like a little like little wall back here. I could redo this wire guide holder and have it kind of like come down lower and have like a piece that comes down and blocks it. But we got to figure out something for here, okay, as well. But the main areas we're going to start on right now, we're going to start on some plastics for our slingshots, and then for this big area, and then these areas right here. Let's see if we can get that part done and we'll move from there. Now, one of the first questions for you might be, great, you go through and you, you cut out the plastic seed, but then how do you hold it in place? Well, if you looked at pinball machines before and paid attention, um, many of you I'm sure are already aware that there's, there's posts of some sort, right? That have screws that are gonna hold them down in place, right? It's as simple as that. So my favorite supplier, Pinball Life, you guys should be giving me a finder see. Um, pinball Life has a bunch of these um, plastic sleeves. Now, these are hard plastic, they're not the rubber ones, like we have on a couple of these other places for like, you know, having the ball bounce off of. This is just a rigid plastic sleeve. And sometimes when you're going through and play testing, you, can, you might want to decide, do I want a, a soft rubber one that the ball is going to bounce off of faster? Or do I want a hard plastic one that's going to kind of deaden and absorb the energy and not make the ball bounce off quite so, so fast? So a little bit of a subtle difference sometimes depending on the shot. But anyway, I digress. For spacers, these are nice and cheap, though cheaper than the, than the rubber ones and a number six or a number eight, but I'm just using a number six screw, inch and a half, I wish I had like an inch and three quarter. Two inches is gonna go all the way through my play field, I don't really wanna do that. Um, I mean, you could use machine screws with like some T-nuts and anchor them in even more tightly. That might be honestly probably the better long-term way to go about it. But for right now, I'm just gonna take this hard plastic sleeve, an inch and a half, uh, number six screw, and with like the 1 16th thick um, acrylic I'm using, That'll still give me about um, over a quarter of an inch of threads going down to the wood. It should be enough to hold it. And you just got to think about, you know, where does 
obvious places to kind of anchor the plastic so it doesn't really move or if the ball hits it it's not going to like you know sink down on one one corner so i tend to do it kind of like near the edges not the absolute edges but kind of near the edges of where my plastics are going to be right because the middle obviously will kind of um, hold itself up and then the other fun thing is just going through now and figuring out okay how do we go through and shape them steve and then cut them there's a number of different ways the approach i'm taking today is I'm going through and taking some kind of thick cardstock, well, or for cardstock it's thin, but thick paper, and I'm going to be going through and kind of cutting to the rough shape, and then going through and just basically kind of tracing that shape. So I have this as like a guide, and then I'm going to use this and put my acrylic on top of that so I know what shape I need to trace, and I'm going to try to uh, mark that on my acrylic. There's other ways. Uh, the more precise final way would be to go through and take those drawings and then digitize them inside like Inkscape or Illustrator or some other vector format um, um, Illustrator program, right? Or image program. And then be able to go through and take that to our um, makerspace, to a laser etcher and cut them out. And that'll also give us really precise, clean screw holes. Cause that's, one of the be, that's going to be one of the hardest things. Cutting acrylic, especially just 1 16th thick, it can be pretty brittle, it can be hard to work with. I've got a scroll saw with a blade that says it's made for acrylic. So we're going to jump back to our scroll saw with that fancy new blade and we're going to cross our fingers and our elbows and toes and eyes and everything and hope that that works because I really don't have time to run down to design these and take them down to the makerspace. That's where we need to go long term but for right now I'm hoping we can get something created here in house in the garage super quick. The other thing that's really tricky without using like a laser engraver or laser cutter is trying to drill holes for the screw holes. Because you'll start going through and drilling, like, okay, I'm, I'm, it's cutting it out. It really is just like scraping or like shaving things every turn, right? And you'll get about three quarters of the way through. And with one thick sixteenth, that's not very far. And right when it's about to go through, it'll crack. Because those last couple of turns, instead of just kind of shaving, it'll all of a sudden grab that bottom edge. It'll put extra fork, um, torque on it. And it'll just like grab it and rip off whatever piece is kind of weak from whichever edge is kind of, kind of thinnest and close to it. So what you want to do is go about halfway through, then flip it over and hit it from the other side. And that'll minimize your chance of it just cracking. But it's still, it's, it's, a, it's risky business. It's a gamble. So, all right. That's where the, the approach we're going to take. At least is what I've got planned out so far. I think it'll work in my head. Let's give it a shot. And I hope that scroll saw works for us. Another trick I'm doing right here is I'm taking the paper and I'm just kind of pushing and rubbing my finger along the edge of the ball guides and that's going to also kind of tell me the shape I need. Like you might have been wondering, are you, how are you going to trace that with a pencil see from underneath or whatever? So this is what I'm doing. I'm just pushing down and that gives me kind of that rough shape here on these lines as to where I need to be going and cutting this piece of paper out. I just laying it down and kind of taking my razor blade and cutting it along and get that nice edge. It was working until then I let go, then it kind of shifted and I didn't quite get it lined back up, then my second cut was off. So I think we're going to stick with pushing the, the paper down and making the, the bend and then cutting afterwards. this in like a 3D program would make it way easier to get uncut. Here's our first plastic though. All right. Here's our second piece. I know this needs to extend a little bit. I got a little too close to the edge of the paper, but piece number one. And then piece number two, I need to like tape this one together somehow, huh?
It actually worked a little better than I thought. Wasn't even using the special blade I had, just my default one because the special blade I realized I bought was for the wrong type of scroll saw. It doesn't have a pin across the top. There are different types of blades for scroll saw. Some are just by tension, they just pinch them. Others will have like a little, a little pin, a little T, and can hang on to them, but they all work the same. There's usually a tensioner in the back that you can loosen up or flip loose, and that'll make the, the blade looser or tighter. And depending on the material you're cutting and the speed you're cutting, you may want that tighter, you may want it looser. For acrylic, and I'm no scroll saw master, <laughs> I've hardly used them before, but for me, um, I'm doing full speed, super tight. One of the most important things I have learned with acrylic though is when you're pushing through, you have to keep your fingers pretty dang tight right around the blade because you do not want that acrylic to be bouncing up and down. If it bounces up and down with the blade, it's just gonna shatter it no matter what, no matter how slow and careful you are. So you've gotta keep pretty good, even solid pressure always right around both sides of the, of the blade as you're pushing through very slowly, take your time. And if you do that, then it gives the blade a chance to kind of, you know, actually cut versus just kind of grab it and, and rip it and snap it, okay? So that worked out pretty good for one, uh, uh, for one plastic, for one slingshot. The corners that are sharp, I'm gonna go through just with my, uh, with my grind over here in the plastic and just kind of really quickly um, smooth down the edges to make them round how I want. I mean, this is not precise. My hand's not perfectly straight. It's good enough for right now just to cover the thing so balls don't get stuck. We'll do laser cut ones um, later on like we talked about. So I gotta do another one of these for the slingshots and then we'll get on to our really long, fancy. This guy's gonna be crazy because once we cut through, this is gonna wanna start lifting up and down. So we might have to do this in two pieces. I don't know. It's gonna be a test of my, my ability, that's for sure. All right. Got everything cut, holes drilled, take the rubber bands off, You're probably gonna need to lift and get underneath here. All right, that's a little low. So, since my play field is a Home Depot half inch, which means it's technically less than half an inch, just like my trough needed some washers to provide, provide spacers, my slingshot, is up higher on the play field than it normally would be because the wood's thinner. And so with just putting these plastic right down on top of these caps, even with a single washer, my slingshot arm is totally hitting it. So I had to go through and put in two washers in between um, the plastic post and, um, and the play field plastic I'm putting on to give it just enough space. And I, I honestly could almost go go three. I'm doing number six washers. They're a little bit thinner and I think I'm okay with two, but if I had more, I'd probably go three washers just to be safe. I can just barely see it hitting. <laughs> Remember, you want them snug, but not so tight they're gonna crack. There we go. Both plastics are in. Oh, and then did I mention that back here in the back, instead of going through and like printing a wall or something else, it's really just like this one place. I'm just gonna go through and drill and put another post back here as a ball deterrent right about there. So the ball does happen to bounce up. It should just come right back. Okay, for these ones back here, 
I went through and I just kind of went ahead and decided where I wanted some posts, drew those holes, and now I'm going to drill through the, those holes in the plastic down into the wood, and that's where we're actually going to screw the plastics down. So I'm going to go through and hold the plastic in place and drill like a pilot hole. Really just a mark, not even a pilot hole. But just saying, this is where I want the screw head to start. Ideally, instead of just long screws, you'd be using posts that would have maybe the plastic going around it and coming up to it and then there's a small little screw going on top of the washer to hold it down so it's a lot easier just to put these in the right place but I don't have a whole lot of those um, posts and it was just a little bit simpler for me so I did it this way final version we'll make final drill holes for the right post we'll put supporting posts in place we'll do it the right way so this is one way to do it for right now all right with that we have all of our primary plastics in these four big chunks and hopefully the wall will not be getting stuck anywhere that it shouldn't. We'll find out during the playtesting this weekend and I'll let you know.